On the agenda tonight, we're going to be taking a look at a cover of We've Only Just Begun by the YouTube channel Jim Midi Doctor. <laughs> Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So I was linked to this video over on Patreon and it is the perfect antidote for some of the videos that we've looked at recently. This is just an amazing cover and I love the way that it's been put together from a video perspective, but just the vocals as well. And by the way, let me just mentioned that it's Tori Holub who is the lead vocalist here and I hope that I've pronounced her surname correctly but this is from the channel and you can check it out if you guys want to it's Jim Midi Doctor and the Midi M-I-D-I is in capital letters I'm going to leave a link to it in the description below so we're just going to jump into this and enjoy it it is a little ironic that the last video we looked at was Charlie Puth performing they long to be close to you. And yeah, uh, that was an auto-tuned performance. But let's jump in and see what's going on here. We've only just begun to live White lace and promises I guess for luck and we're on our way We've only begun Before the rising sun Start up walking and learn to run. Yes, we've just begun. Sharing horizons that are new to us. Watching the signs along the way. Talking it over, just the two of us. Working together day to day Together And when the evening comes We smile So much of life ahead We'll find a place where there's room to grow That are new to us Watching the signs along the way oh, Talking it over just the two of us Working together day to day Together Together Just begun. And there we have it. We had to listen to that the whole way through. As soon as we get into this, it's almost like you want to punch the air and say, finally, there is something that is just 
genuinely musical and hasn't been post-processed from a pitch perspective. So before I jump into it all, I'm just going to clear that on the screen. Obviously, we had the pitch monitoring software as well that we'll look into in a second uh, with, with Tori's voice. But just getting the names up on screen so we can see who did what and... You know, James, or I'm assuming that that's Jim who owns the channel uh, with the backing vocals. You can see all that he does there, but the audio mixing as, as well as the video. When we're talking about the audio mixing, what is great about this is that it's it's not pitch corrected. It's not auto-tuned. And, I mean, talk about being able to tell the difference between that, a lot of the videos that we've looked at recently, and an actual voice that you can hear. And it, I mean, it just so happens that Tori's voice is so similar in where it sits. I mean, obviously range wise, but just the resonance, the body in her sound, so similar to you know, Karen Carpenter's voice. I mean, it is crazy, but we're just going to have a little look through. What I do like about this video is it's showing you how they're coming up with the sound. So when we go through, you know, we've got keys here, clarinet, you can see Tori singing. And then as soon as the other vocals come in and, you know, having edited videos myself, I can tell this is probably a bit of a nightmare, getting everything on screen, putting it in boxes and yeah, probably editing it. It was all jumpy and a bit of a nightmare, but we get a visual representation representation of the mix of the four voices that we've got and then we've obviously got uh, Tori's voice behind her and her harmonizing kind of four times but then all of the other instrumentation that we can see so when we're listening in and you know we get to see everything that's going on from a musical perspective instrumentally and and, and the things that are in the mix so yeah, I mean, it's a great mix. The vocals are really up front, you know, which is great as well, because then you get to appreciate that we're just hearing a vocal here. This is just Tori singing into a microphone. And I'm not, I'm not saying that this is, this obviously isn't just all one take and <laughs> they're all recording it because Tori can't harmonize with herself. Uh, so yeah, it's obviously been done in different takes, but the video is the video, something to look at. We've only just begun to live. And when, I mean, there are going to be so many things. If you guys want to go and watch that analysis video on Karen Carpenter that we've done previously, you can do. There are going to be so many things that overlap uh, if you go to that video after this. But this kind of thing where Tori's voice is, I mean, she's got the freedom to go where she wants to. So you will get this kind of thing where we're between notes here and slightly flat of the, the A3, but then up here with this really even vibrato, so similar to Karen Carpenter's vibrato and this. I always say that great singers will hit these lines now and again, but the best frequency, the best note to hit isn't always on these lines. So I'm sure if we really zoomed into this, that we wouldn't be perfectly over all the time. We can see here that we are, and then we drift up a little bit, below, up, down, yeah, and then sharp, come down again. So this is the point that the, we're talking about literally probably, what, three or four cents here, variation pitch-wise. So it's a really accurate vocal, but this is what will happen. It will flow. When you're looking at something that's been manipulated, it will just all get stuck to the line and it will never really leave the line. So what we'll also see is that this won't happen in the next kind of three or four notes. Let's listen on. White lace and promise. So taking uh, the next few notes, and again, this is how we know that it's not pitch corrected, is here, uh, we were flat, uh, and the line is just at the top there, I don't know if you can make that out. Then we're a little bit kind of sharp, come down, and we rise up at the end there. And then here, we're actually quite a lot flat, but we slide up and go a little bit sharp. So, great vocalist, I mean, and, and Tori has a voice, that is probably one of the most accurate that you're going to hear because it is so similar to Karen Carpenter's and her voice was so accurate. But this is the point that you get a great vocalist will hit one of these lines, but they're not being calibrated to these lines. So this is why it's something that 
occasionally happens, but a great voice isn't on these lines. So that's why it doesn't happen all the time. Uh, and listen to that, the way that if you were drawing a line through this, it would be between notes. But that's where the expression is. Says. And this says kind of dramatic slow vibrato that technically, yeah, according, and this is why, you know, A440 tuning, standard tuning, when it gets calibrated or when you're calibrating a voice to that, that's where it just it just loses everything because you're no longer allowed to do this. The you know, pitch correction, especially auto-tune, doesn't allow this to happen. It would move it over the line. So all of that expression that we just heard, you would lose. I guess for luck and we're on our way. And then I just want to point that out again because listen to this. For luck and that A4. For luck, for luck, I guess for luck. That note sounded absolutely spot on when you're not looking at it. I, guess for luck and we're I mean, you can't get better. That is one of those examples of that note was pitch perfect. Pitch perfect. This isn't pitch perfect. This is standard tuning, the, the lines that we're looking at. So when we have a look, you don't even need to zoom in at the top right here. This note that was absolutely bang on the right frequency, it sounded perfect, according to this, is sharp. Therefore, pitch correction would say it's wrong. So again, this would have been moved. But this is what I love about this cover, is that the production. So, I mean, Jim, the, the production that he's done with this, he hasn't done what you hear all the time nowadays. He's just literally probably just listened to it and mixed it with with his ears which is always the best way to do it but he hasn't applied anything to this vocal which is great on our way. Before sun. and to be fair his backing vocals are spot on as well i mean the way that he's sung them obviously he's not kind of auto-tuning his backing vocals, but the way that he's produced them as well. When I say produced, I don't mean produced the noise. I'm talking about producing it from a mixing perspective. We fly so many roads to choose. Uh, I mean, the mix is just amazing. Right, let me... I'm just going to take down the accompaniment. Actually, we'll leave in a little bit of that because... Uh, it's so well played, but just to have Tori's voice now up front. We start off walking and learn to run. Again, listen to that. Held note slightly sharp of the B3. That's exactly where it sh I say should have been. It's exactly where it is, where, where that sound, that emotion is. So, yeah, this is great because it throws this totally out of the window when you start to look at a voice that is so spot on and it contradicts everything that the music industry is doing now with vocals. Just this is actually really good as well because we can see the way that Jim is holding his vocal and is slightly below the note. So even the backing vocals, yeah, haven't been pitch corrected. He's just sung them as accurately as he, he can or he hears and then just leaves it like that because obviously when he's singing this when Tori's singing this they're singing it in relation to the instrumentation that they're listening to through their headphones so they've got relevance to the backing and this whole piece is entirely relevant to itself the instrumentation the the playing ability of the instrumentalists is a living breathing thing interacting with the vocalists and them editing their pitch with everything that they can hear. So this is why sometimes with the older recordings, you know, 30 or 40 or 50 years ago, you'd get a kind of magic sound to it because it's the blending of the intellect and the technical ability, but also the expression of instrumentalists blending with the expression of a vocalist. And they're literally responding to each other you know, 
in real time and we're getting to hear that musical conversation. So this is why with those older recordings and with this particular cover, there's a magic about it because it's all relevant to each other. Once you start moving this to different places, this, this vocal line, it lose the, loses the relevance and therefore the magic. I, I think that's why it happens that nowadays you can't really connect to a, a vocalist as much because they're irrelevant to all of the you know, musicians that are playing and all of their expression. So anyway, let's listen on. Sharing horizons that are new to us. I mean, even this kind of thing where when you're listening to an isolated vocal, you can hear that we have now got this multi-tracked vocal and we've got that in the video. So you can see that we've got this you know, double tracked vocal it, on screen, it, just in case you can't hear or you, you can't place why the vocal now sounds a little bit different. You know, everything's explained on screen, so it's a great video as well. Watching the signs along the way oh, wow. Talking it over, just the two of us Working together day to day Together And again, yeah, totally throwing uh, this thing out of the window. Great note held on here with vibrato. And we're between the A sharp three and the B three here. So I know that we can't really see the um, the notes on the left hand side. You might be able to see it clearer than me because my screen's a lot smaller. But yeah, you have to take my word for it that that's right between the lines. That's what I mean about totally blowing this out of the water. And when the evening comes... And here we go. Well, this is, if we were to zoom in on it, ever so slightly below the line. But here, you know, touching the line for a spell because she's really accurate vocally. And the irony is she's more accurate than this graph will let us see because... There's not anything yet that gives you the uh, the approximation or the mean frequency of all the instrumentation and then the note in relation to that. That's something that doesn't exist. And I don't know how technology would even be able to work that out. Where the best note is. It, it seems to be something that's just intrinsic to us as humans when we listen to a voice and we listen to something musically, we just get this feeling that, oh, that was right. That was exactly where it should have been and gave me a particular emotion listening to it. We've got this sense and that's what it is. It's the sense of knowing frequencies because sound is just frequency. So all of these things that we come up with to try and explain it, we'll never really be able to explain the emotion that we feel when a particular frequency, frequency is hit. And the reason why that frequency gives you that emotion because it's all in relation to the frequencies that are surrounding it. So yeah, that's that's what I mean about this here. It isn't accurate. And this is why when people say, oh, I know a singer who can hit these lines all the time because they're that good. These lines, as we can see from this vocal, these lines doesn't make it good if you hit them. So this is the thing that when you start thinking about a string section, for example, in an orchestra, they've all tuned their violins, but they'll all be ever so slightly out of tune with each other, but not so much as you would hear because you hear the collective. And going into even more detail, every violinist would play their note in an ever so slightly different place. It might be a fraction of a millimeter, but because you don't have frets on a violin, it means that it's gonna be a fraction flat or a fraction sharp to the violinist that they're sitting next to. So you get this accumulation of sound that's imperfections added together and then the vocalist reacts to all of those imperfections giving you the seemingly perfect because it sounds pitch perfect frequency that goes with all of this extra sound so yeah that's why that perfect frequency moves it changes it isn't linear like this so yeah i mean that's why this vocal is just in response to the instrumentation, which is why, obviously, great vocal. Tori's a great singer, great backing vocals, great production. We smile so much of life 
for him. We'll find a place where there's room to grow. And yes, we've just begun. I mean, just another thing. Tori's dynamic appreciation is absolutely spot on. Where she starts a phrase... And then she'll lean into it ever so slightly, exactly what Karen used to do. But let's listen on. Sharing horizons that are new to us. Watching the signs along the way. Talking it over, just the two of us. Working together day to day. Together, together. I mean, those really subtle things like together and leaning into it. That's what I mean. The point that I just made, the dynamic appreciation of getting slightly louder. And, you know, when you lean into it like that, going, you can hear how much air is in there. And then when you lean into it, you're now applying more pressure. Therefore, the vocal cords are coming together more tightly and you're getting less air. There's less air flowing through you know, the vocal cords. So it's not just the case that Tori's really accurate vocally with her pitch. The resonance where she places her voice just sounds so similar to Karen's. The, the range, of course, is all part of that, the contralto range. And you're having that same body in the sound and not forcing her voice to go too low. She obviously doesn't have a voice that sits really high and has to try and, you know, go, oh, you know, and get a really weird tone to her voice. It just sits in exactly the same place. But... Once you roll that all in with that finer detail and level of dynamic appreciation and expression rolled in and not pitch correcting it, then this is how you can just get a standalone vocal like this. For me, this is clearly and by far the, the best cover that I've seen of this song when you're saying about keeping it true to the original release by the Carpenters. This is unmatched, and I've watched a lot of videos on YouTube, as you guys can imagine. Listening out for those backing harmonies, again, the dynamic appreciation of where to place those. Because if Tori sang those in the same configuration that she's using for the lead vocal, there'd be two up front. Let me just play it again. We'll find a place where there's room to grow. Grow. Having this lighter uh, breathing, and again, the subtlety of it. it. It's only when you think about it, like I think about what I just did, going, uh, and taking the note down from nothing, uh, leaning into it, uh, and going into a breathy sound, and then applying more pressure to get that flow. And this is just the backing vocal. So you've got this going on all the time in the background. By the way, again, this is something that Jim's gonna be doing with his vocal, being light with it. So much of life ahead. He's actually all the way down there, which makes it even more impressive because he's going ahead. He's having to hit a note that would be uh, would be down there in your chest voice. If you did that, it's not going to work with Tori's voice. So, and, and again, that that would now set it apart from what you're trying to replicate. So, you know, Jim's done a fair amount of vocal manipulation and vocal placement to get it to sound where it needs to be to sound or. He, he's got it to sound how it needs to by placing the voice uh, in that kind of head voice lighter place rather than chest voice, which wouldn't have worked. We'll find a place where there's room to grow. And yes, we've just begun. 
Mm -hmm. so, I mean, that's all to do with vocal blending as well. Having that, uh, that lighter sound. When you're a guy singing, uh, and singing those kinds of notes, it's all going to be in that head voice space. I don't want this video to go on all year, even though it, could do. Uh, make sure that you check out uh, Jim's channel. It's Jim Midi Doctor. Type that in. There's a link in the description below to this video. So just click on that. That's the quickest way there. Yeah, watch the video, leave a comment, subscribe to his channel, all of that cool stuff. And as always, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below and keep the suggestions and requests coming, of course. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll catch you guys at the next one. Rock!